All right, hello everyone, fellow uh, Jurassic Park fans and Nintendo fans and Prince Charminer fans and everyone. I've really got to work on a new intro because there's so much stuff that I'm doing here that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't work with the intro. Uh, like, pff, regardless. Anyways, hello. <laughs> Welcome to another video. Uh, today we're going to be doing an unboxing because um, we've got some brand new news. Um, I love Jurassic Park, as you guys can tell. We've already had three uh, unboxing videos of the Hammond Collection uh, that I'm very, very happy about. No, wait, actually, hold on. Rex, uh, Ian Raptor, but, no, okay, this is the fourth. This will be the fourth video. That's right, there we go. Uh, yeah, so I'm a huge fan of Jurassic Park. I love the toys and... Uh, Earlier this year, we got uh, started with the Hammond Collection, which is a replacement for the Amber Collection, and we got some really cool figures. Uh, so if you want to see any of those videos, uh, click, let me see, left, right, I guess up here uh, for the playlist. You can check it down in the description below as well. But today, uh, we're going to be taking a look at two medium-sized figures. We got two carnivores. So first up, we've got ourselves the Baryonyx. Heck yes. Uh, this was one of the first figures released in Wave 1. And then after that, we're going to be taking a look at the Ceratosaurus from Jurassic Park 3, which was released in Wave 2 along with the Triceratops and other figures. So I'm very excited. These both look really, really cool. Um, I'm excited to see how they scale with each other and uh, just, you know, their articulation. Um, so far, the Hammond Collection has not disappointed. Um, there are some gripes here and there with, like, the smaller figures and uh, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, of course. But the medium-sized figures... They've been, they've been pretty, pretty good. Uh, the Parasaurolophus and the Triceratops are uh, definitely worthy of any to any collector's um, collection. So let's jump in and uh, let's open these bad boys up. All right, so here we go. We got the Baryonyx right here. Uh, let's see, you got the Hammond Collection logo, the T-Rex, same old thing. These uh, the, the boxes are pretty uniform and, uh, uh, you know, easy to identify. That's really nice. I like that about the Hammond Collection. Uh, so, yeah, you've seen one box, you've seen them all. Right here we have the figure off to the side with the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom because that's where this uh, design is based off of. Got the uh, figure on the back. And let's take a look at the uh, the art that they use. So this is when uh, Claire and Franklin are down in the, uh, well, I guess the control room is what it's called. Or where they're, where they're trying to reset everything so they can track the dinos. But then the uh, Mount Cybo goes off. So let's go ahead and let's read this. Baryonyx as lava rains down. The Baryonyx bursts into the bunker, forcing Claire Deering and Franklin Webb... Webb is his last name? I forgot about that. To make a narrow escape in every respect. So there we go. Let's go ahead and let's open this bad boy up. Okay, here we go. So I've been sitting on this figure for a while. Uh, so it's a little, it was a little dusty on the outside of the box, but... Let's see, right here we've got, uh, of course, the tail is not assembled uh, because a lot of these dinosaurs are pretty big and they won't fit inside the box. So it looks like you just pull it out and uh, there you go. There's your Baryonyx tail. Now let's see, what have we got here? What have we got keeping this uh, this bad boy in place? Got right here by the foot. Of course, I did not bring anything to cut. We found some little scissors. So these will be a lot better than the nail clippers I was using in the last video. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and just snip uh, right here. Oh, come on. There we go. We got one right under here on the other foot. Boy, these scissors are kind of duty. There we go. Uh, let's see where else we have on the body up here. Let's go ahead and just cut right in there. Okay, and then it looks like the arms are free. So it looks like it's just the snout of the figure that we have to release. There we go. Jeez. I almost poked myself with the scissors, so that would have been very, very bad. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's get this behemoth out of here. It's not really that big, but... There we go. I think that's it. That There shouldn't be any other anything else holding him in place. There we go. Yeah, that's it. Those are the only points that you need to cut out. So here we go. We have our Baryonyx here. Uh, let's see. There's the tail. Or the socket that the tail goes into. So like I said, like all these other figures, you want to line it up and then just give it a nice little push in. Uh, let's see. That's the, that's it right there. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to line this up. Come on. There we go. There's the click. That's what we're looking for. And then just adjust as necessary to fit the figure's uh, art. And there we go. Here it is. The Baryonyx. Oops. Let's see if I can... 
Can I get you to stand up? There we go. There's our Baryonyx. Okay. Uh, first thing I noticed, this head is very, very loose. What the heck? Why is my head so loose? So it doesn't look like it's going to mess with the articulation too much, but it is. It does have, like, a little bit of... It's like it's not connected properly. Hmm. Very odd. So, well, uh, just be aware. I don't know. I don't know if I've, I don't know if I've seen anyone else to mention this about their figure, but yeah, look at it. Yeah, I can shake it and his head just, just, it's just loose. That's so weird. Okay, but, um, I do like the, the, the detailed sculpture on this guy. He looks really, really cool. Ooh. All right. So we got the profile view, frontal view, and let's see. So his mouth opens up you Can open it like that. Can open it pretty looks like you can open it pretty wide so that's nice that's nice and like i like how it's closed and it looks very crocodilian uh so yeah neck articulation at the base we can move it up we can move it to the right to the left so we can have a nice couple of right uh, different various looks uh let's see let's go on to the arms the arms are very very muscular i like it a lot uh we can pivot swing them out swing them out let's see Move those legs out of the way. Bring them in, and they are on ball joints too. So it looks like yeah, you can you can rotate them all the way around. So you can get them in a nice variety of different poses. Uh, ball joint at the elbow looks like 360, and it's also on a swivel, so you can got some nice little elbow action. Uh, claws and hands are not articulated at all, but the claws are painted. That's one pet peeve of mine that. I don't know why Mattel always does. They forget to paint the claws. So, I'm glad that this uh, Baryonyx has his claws nice and done. Uh, the actual torso, it's a uh, hard plastic, but look at the look at the detail on the on the back. Very very crocodilian like. It's so cool. I can imagine just like putting this guy on the water and just making him look like a crocodile stalking. Cuz look at that. Look how he looks when you just straighten everything out. Really cool. Really, really cool. Let's go on to the tail. Um, it's on a swivel on that ball joint that we connected. And it looks like you can, yeah, there's a wire in here. So you can pose this and bend it as much as you like to suit your needs. Um, I'll probably just keep it like that. I don't, I don't try not to bend them too much because then uh, the wire gives away and then it tears into the plastic. But do with it what you will. It is your toy now. Um, okay, and then on to the leg. So looks like we've got... 360 with the hips that's cool and they can open you can push them in pull them out so that's cool uh we have right here at the knee nice little socket right there for bending and it looks like yeah they can also go 360 and then right here at the ankle or like midway through you can also bend it got a nice little nice little swivel joint right there ball joint as well and then as you can see also the ankle oh my goodness i have the ankle all kinds of messed up can also right here at the ball ball joint at the bottom swivel around and you can move up and down so you can have it in like a running position or a swimming position let's see let's see if we can get the other leg let's move this right here so you can you can easily make this guy into like a swimming crocodile that's really cool so far, um, I think this figure is really, really good. This is probably the best figure that I've seen so far in terms of, uh, uh, I want to say accuracy to the, uh, to the movie because I don't know. It just, it just, it's, it's big enough. Look at the feet. Look at the feet. The feet are so small, but it goes with the figure so well. It scales perfectly. I don't know. It's just, it's perfect. This Baryonyx figure is great. I know the Baryonyx is not scientifically accurate to what it is in uh, real life. The Jurassic World took a lot of liberties with that, but uh, for this toy, I think this is the best. This this is like hands down probably the best looking figure that I've opened for the Hammond collection so far. Um, the colors are great, the details great. Uh, my only complaint for my figure is this. Darn, see, look at I try to put it right here, and he just moves back. So that's a bummer. I might have to get another one, something that's a little. A little better. I don't know why it's so loose. Maybe I can contact Mattel. It has been a while. I bought this one when he launched. So I don't know if they will honor that. So we'll see. I can show him my target receipt. That's where I bought it from. But regardless, that's great. There's our Baryonyx. I'm going to put him right over there. 
And now let's take a look at our Ceratosaurus. So yeah, same old thing. Uh, we got Hammond Collection, Ceratosaurus. You've seen one box, you've seen them all. There's the Ceratosaurus figure itself from Jurassic Park 3. This is the first figure from Jurassic Park 3. So definitely looking forward to opening this up. On the back, we have the Ceratosaurus, the figure. And let's take a look at what it says. Ceratosaurus, an unfortunate stench left by the Spinosaurus. Turns out to be quite unfortunate for Dr. Alan Grant. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let, me, so let me try that again. An unfortunate stench left by the Spinosaurus turns out to be quite fortunate for Dr. Alan Grant and others when they come face to face with the Ceratosaurus of Isla Sorna. So yeah, uh, Grant and uh, Amanda Kirby and er uh, Paul Kirby are looking for their cell phone that was eaten by the, by the Spinosaurus. Uh, and uh, then <laughs> they're rummaging through poo. When the Ceratosaurus walks upon them, he smells the poo and he's like, uh, nope, I am out of here. I am not going to be around when that Spinosaurus comes back. So yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> it's really funny. That's like the first and only time we've seen the Ceratosaurus in, uh, the live action films, I think. I don't think we've seen one anywhere else. All right, so let me go ahead and let's, uh, let's take this, let's take this guy out of his box. All right, here we go. Here's our Ceratosaurus. Okay, let's see. Uh, we got the tail down here. It looks like pretty easy to take out. The tails have always been pretty easy to take out, so that's cool. Yeah, there we go. That's that's just pull on it, and you'll come right out. Uh, let's see. We've got some. Let's see. Nothing on the face. Nothing. Uh, we got one on the arm right here, so we're gonna go ahead and just clip this. There we go. So we have the front arm right here. Uh, we have the body over here, but I'll probably do that from the back. Uh, and it looks like we have two. Yeah, so the body, two. So it looks like there's four four things that you have to take out in order to get your dinosaur free. So we're just going to pull on this and then snip. There we go. And then the feet right here. Just going to go ahead and, I don't know, if I guess I can pull on it. Let me try pulling on it. Let me see. There we go. That's one. So yeah, just, just pull on the... Pull on the tie like that, pull it up, and you'll be able to get it out in no time. Um, this one's going to be a little bit harder. I might have to do it from the front. Let's try it from the front. Do a frontal attack. Ah! Scissors are stuck on my thumb. Yikes! There we go. Okay, so the best best method is right here. Just going to go ahead and just pull that. And don't stab your finger. There you go. Or your finger. Remember, kids, if you are unboxing this toy... You need to open it, get your parents to help you with the scissors because it can be very, very dangerous. But let's go ahead and let's pull our awesome carnivore out of the box. There we go. Hey, there we go. Nice and easy. Move these little zip ties out of the way. So there we go. There's a Ceratosaurus. Let me fix the leg. Already, this figure is way beefier than, than the one we just opened. So I, can't, I can't get his leg. Ooh, there we go. That leg had a little bit of uh, resistance. Resistance is good sometimes. Uh, it's nice for, for posability and stuff like that. But as you can see, this this uh, figure does not does not stand on his own because we need to balance him with his tail. So same old song and dance. Find the hole, find the socket, line it up, give it a push until you hear that. Wait, did I do it? Oh, I guess I did. I do it. I didn't. I didn't hear the click. Bingo. Okay, there we go. So now. Now our figure should stand on its own. Unless I have this leg wrong. I think it's this leg that might be the problem. Let's put you like that. There we go. And you like that. I need to spread your legs out a little more for balance. There we go. There's a Ceratosaurus. All right. So let's take a look at our awesome figure. So um, right away, the head sculpt is pretty good. It looks a little weird. Um, I like the teeth. You know what he reminds me of? He reminds me of the Godzilla Juniors that came out. There's one that had like a red, that had red, reddish, like a pink, pink skin. And then he had like this weird, like Tostito, like chip looking skin. That's what the Ceratosaurus reminds me of. See if I put that picture up. Uh, see if I can find that picture. But all right, let's take a look at our Ceratosaurus. We got a nice little horn up here. Um, mouth opens up pretty big, pretty wide. Uh, that's really cool. It's always a... Always a plus when we have a nice roaring figure. Uh, and uh, the jaw looks like it's articulated. Yeah, double hinged jaw. So that's cool. So you can make it as wide as you want. Ah! 
when uh, you, you can like have it a little bit just have the, the lower jaw move I like it a lot I like it that's it's really nice and you can close them shut uh, the eye the eye is pretty good no no dead eye or any uh, any eye like looking in a different direction uh, sometimes uh, t dinosaur toys and like animal toys the eyes and the pupils can be off and it'll really really mess with the figure and it looks like the the head okay so the the base of the neck behind the head is what moves up and down and it's not on a ball joint just goes up and down but the base of the neck right where it meets the torso is on a ball joint so you can rotate it um, it has a little bit of give you can go to the right you can go to the left so you can have it looking at you or looking at someone else that's kind of cool uh, the torso right here of course is that hard plastic but still nice and detailed the skin is great the I like the the paint on this one this one is really really nice I don't know it's uh it just goes really well with the entire body and it's just uniform throughout uh, let's go to the arms let's go to the, the little arms so we have swivel action just like the baryonyx so you can go in go out and they can rotate let's see how far can they rotate they can go all the way all right so we like to see and then the elbows also on a ball joint you can twist them rotate them 360 and they have the little swivel action right there so you can move them up and down let's see I got my fingers in the way up and down like that so a lot of posability and again a bonus for this beautiful figures manicure gotta love it when the claws are painted when the claws aren't painted oof that's my I'm telling you it's my biggest pet peeve uh, tail so the tail starts right here I don't know why my tail seems like it's a little like a little loose or I don't know I think I pulled on it and I shouldn't have pulled on it but um, other than that pretty good same old thing got the wire got the wire on the tail so you can pose it move it around however you like to match your scene and uh, let's see the legs the legs it looks like these legs are gonna be similar to the baryonyx we have yep we can rotate it 360 degrees there we go it's a little bit of a tight squeeze on the torso as you can see he's very very thick he's a lot bigger it seems like than the uh, than the baryonyx we'll do a size comparison right now um, and the hips yeah you can open them up you can for a narrow stance or a wide stance uh, what do we got right here on the on the knee you can bend it we have the 360 yeah ball joint so it looks like this is pretty similar to the baryonyx we have the little joint right here on the <laughs> I guess the mid knee I don't know what that is called for these figures I'm or like these <laughs> these dinosaurs but yeah it can swivel 360 it's on a hinge and then <clears throat> and then same thing for the ankle and we go hinge and oh, you gotta hold this piece if you want to rotate the foot but you can rotate the foot there we go and of course nice little toe claws painted very very good so what do I think of this figure um, it's pretty good. I've never been really a huge fan of the Ceratosaurus, um, just in general, the creature or the dinosaur from Jurassic Park 3, but uh, this is pretty good. I like it. I like it a lot. I don't know how I oppose this guy, but um, here he is. We got Ceratosaurus and we've got our Baryonyx. So let's go ahead and let's do a little bit of a size comparison. I might have to zoom out for this. Yeah, so if you look at them, they're both. Yeah, they're about the same size actually no they're not the baryonyx is surprisingly smaller um lengthwise they're pretty much about the same but the you can see the ceratosaurus is definitely thicker it's a lot bigger the head is bigger the torso is huger or like thicker it's more it's more rounded so let's see if you do like a see if we do a top-down view you see right there yeah the, the ceratosaurus is just com considerably bigger so Baryonyx is smaller, so like a more slender, slicker design. And the Ceratosaurus here is just big, bulky, muscular. But I think that's exactly how the, the creature is. So that's kind of cool. Let me see if I can get ourselves a, uh, a group photo. Let's try. We can go. Okay, there we go. There are all our Hammond Collection figures. Let me see if I can lower this just a little bit. Uh, as you can see, the T-Rex still just completely towers over the rest of the figures. We've got ourselves, uh, we've got Ian Malcolm right here, the Velociraptor, our Triceratops, the Parasaurolophus, Baryonyx, and Ceratosaurus. It's amazing uh, just how well they were able to scale the medium-sized figures. Let me see, level and just a little bit closer, but yeah. It's amazing how well they scale these figures with each other. The, tr the, the, the four medium creatures that we have 
all look pretty well. They're, they're the same price point, but they're all different sizes and dimensions, but they all work together. And then, of course, we have the giant Tyrannosaurus Rex back there just looking over the, her kingdom. <laughs> and we have the little Raptor and Ian Malcolm. So I'm, I'm very, very happy with this Hammond collection. It has been nothing but great so far. So uh, we have two more figures that I have to unbox. And we have two more on the way that are uh, going to be pre-ordered. We have Alan Grant and the Galley Mimus. We've got ourselves Dr. Ellie Sattler and uh, the Dilophosaurus. Those will be coming out pretty soon. Also, excuse me for the neck for the for the neck break. My God, no, not the neck break for the voice crack. Yeah, but Ellie Sattler and the Dilophosaurus should be coming out in about uh, ne early next month or mid next month. Um, so that'll be great. And then we just got revealed. Uh, we have the Pachycephalosaurus from the Lost World. And also, uh, Doctor, not Doctor, uh, Ray Arnold, uh, Samuel L. Jackson's character from the first Jurassic Park, he will be making his debut in the Hammond Collection pretty soon. So I'm excited for that. I can't wait to get those figures. Those will be great. Especially the colors, the, the, the paint job on the Pachycephalosaurus looks amazing. So I can't wait. But yes, here's our collection so far. Uh, it is great. I'm loving it. I can't wait to see other medium-sized carnivores come out. I was just thinking, I'm like, oh, I can't wait for the Spinosaurus to come out. The Indominus Rex. And I just thought about it. I'm like, you know what? I want to see. I can't wait to see the Hammond Collections take on the Allosaurus. Uh, hopefully, hopefully they do the Allosaurus from Dominion, um, which is also the same one from uh, Battle of Big Rock. That that Allosaurus looks amazing. I love the color scheme. I love the way it looks. Just the, the design and uh, the Carnotaurus. Carnotaurus would be freaking great. I would love to see the Carnotaurus in the Hammond Collection. Um, I feel like the Baryonyx and the Ceratosaurus are like the baby versions of those two i don't know why but when i put them face to face i thought of that scene in dominion um where the allosaurus and the carnotaurus come out and you see owen between them and uh, i just thought wow how cool would that be to replicate once the hammond collection comes out so that's what i'm excited for i can't i can't wait to see other the, uh, the other medium-sized big theropods come out uh but yes if you enjoyed leave a like comment below what is your favorite figure from the hammond collection so far i still have to say that my favorite my favorite figure is the Tyrannosaurus Rex. That is, it's the, it's the, the coolest one that we've gotten so far. Uh, but I think the most well done one has to be the Baryonyx. Oh, sorry, Ian, Dr. Malcolm, I'm sorry. But yeah, the, the Baryonyx is, it's just really, really good. Really good for the price point and it just has so much detail and articulation. I love it. I really wish I could fix that head though. But uh, make sure you subscribe. Ring the bell so you're notified. We're going to have a lot more Hammond Collection uh, stuff coming soon. I've got a big piece from the Hammond Collection coming out pretty soon. So be stay, stay tuned for that. It's, uh, it's something I'm very excited for. I can't wait. But make sure you have a good day. Take care, guys. Stay safe out there. I can't wait to see you next time. And uh, take care. Bye-bye.